record and great. So thank you everyone for joining us. We have a great uh, session today planned to promote one of our amazing graduate programs. I'm gonna turn it over to our uh, guest speakers and let them introduce themselves. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dr. Kelly Davis. I'm the director of the master's program in disaster and emergency management, which is what we're here to talk about. And then I'm gonna let Dr. Cohen introduce himself. Uh, thank you, Dr. Davis. My name is uh, Dr. Mateus. is mentioning it's Dr. Jason Cohen. I'm the academic program coordinator uh, for the Master's of Science in Disaster Emergency Management. I also teach in the program as well, uh, as does Dr. Davis. Very nice to meet everybody. Okay, so what I wanted to do was um, I'm going to present a PowerPoint presentation, just a short one, and then I might go into a little bit more explanation about what it is our program is about, what emergency management is, and et cetera, because a lot of people just don't really understand it. So let me share my screen. There we go. So this is, let me get it to, um, get it to, presentation mode and oh let's try this there we go okay so again we're um, at Nova Southeastern University and we're part of the College of Osteopathic Medicine uh, the Dr. Kieran C. Patel College of Osteopathic Medicine and we're housed in the graduate programs uh, such as those that are um, I think you may have already heard from or, or know about, which is Masters of Public Health, Masters of Science in Biomedical Informatics, Masters of Nutrition, et cetera. So we're housed with them in the College of Osteopathic Medicine. Ours is a little different. Uh, all of those others really sort of um, make sense being in a, a College of Medicine. Ours, a lot of people kind of ask me why we're in the College of Medicine. And when I explained that we initially got started after the anthrax letters back in um, 2001, and some of the people that we work with were the investigators and responders to that, then it sort of starts to make sense. So um, we uh, just, we started there with a bunch of uh, trainings of nurses and doctors and things like that. And I've done a lot of that myself, traveled around the country, to different medical conferences and trained them in chemical and biological responses and what to look for and the symptoms and so forth. And from that, we grew into an entire um, academic program with this master's degree. So um, that's how that's sort of a little background about us and how we got started and why we're housed in a College of Osteopathic Medicine. Uh, we've been around since 2012, so only about eight years, but in those eight years, uh, five of those years, we've been ranked um, in the top 20. We are currently ranked fifth in the nation for online programs in emergency management. And we are ranked first in the nation for having an interprofessional uh, program in emergency management. Now, what that means is that uh, there are several other programs on campus, such as criminal justice, national security affairs, public administration, child protection, public health, biomedical informatics, and we work with all of those programs and teach a lot of their students. So if you think about it, disasters really are not specific to any one particular group, like the homeless or the elderly or the frail. So disasters affect everybody. So we want a very interprofessional training program so that police officers learn how to work with firefighters who learn how to work with public health officials. And then we need that, uh, all those medical records in there as well, even during a disaster, such as what's going on now with the pandemic, we still have to keep all those medical records and so forth. So we're very interprofessional and we were recognized for that and uh, we're very happy about that. Okay, it's not advancing. Sorry about that. I'm trying to get it to advance, but I don't know. Dr. Davis, if you left click on it and then press uh, the right curve, it'll start letting you uh, slide through it. Left click and then what? Uh, and then. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. There you go. Yeah. I've never had to do that before. Okay. So um, our mission is really not only to educate um, our students in the areas of 
emergency management and disaster response, but we do have a research component and that is a requirement. And we also encourage service. So for example, a lot of our students, uh, if they're not already doing so, they uh, join the community emergency response team, they join the medical reserve corps, they just, uh, they do disaster exercises if there's one in their area. So we encourage them to get out into the community and, and do things. For example, we have several of our students right now who are helping <clears throat> out with our local medical reserve corps uh, to get donors into the um, COVID-19 convalescent plasma program. And um, I've been overseeing that. So we're getting them involved in that process to so they can actually do something to help out because a lot of us are uh, have these stay at home orders, but it allows them the opportunity to to serve. Our program is offered in an online format completely 100%. Uh, you never have to come to campus, but we love to meet our students. So if you want to come to campus, we encourage that, especially if you're local. Uh, but all of our classes are online and in the evenings so that we can serve that population who is um, works during the day. And I would say about 85% of our students fall into that category uh, as being working professionals. So we like to, uh, we, we're making an effort to um, educate them to become leaders in the field, to be respected leaders in the field, um, and be recognized as um, competent professionals. So um, we develop, and we have an educational program that helps you to develop the skills to manage very complex incidents, such as uh, the Las Vegas shooting, um, or a school active shooter incident, or maybe um, something like the Super Bowl, where you have a lot of people, and if there's something that happens there, down in South Florida, both in Broward County, where we are in Fort Lauderdale and in Miami, we frequently have dignitaries such as presidents or big name um, uh, singers and things like that that come to town, and there has to be something in place to deal with that, blocking off roads, how to reroute traffic, how to protect those individuals, such, an, uh, such things like that, and that's part of what we help train you to do. So um, we also like, again, to train you in the areas of research and how to look at things, uh, whether it's through the literature or through just the thought process of how to do that. All right, so our students are healthcare professionals. We have quite a few of the um, DO students, not only from NOVA, but from other colleges as well. Uh, the pharmacy program, we actually have a doctorate of uh, pharmacy, a PharmD, um, dentists, PAs, EMTs, paramedics. Um, we've had some meteorologists in our programs because when you're thinking about hurricanes, tornadoes, and things like that, meteorologists are often consulted. So they are part of that inner circle within what we call the EOC or Emergency Operations Center. They have to have a meteorologist in there if it's a weather event. We have public health workers. We'd have people that work for CDC, the local um, or county health departments, wherever they happen to live, not necessarily here. Environmental health and safety workers. Certainly we have a lot of firefighters and law enforcement officers, both sheriff and local. Uh, we actually have quite a few emergency managers that are in our programs um, and we've asked, I've asked in the, in the past, have you learned anything? And they're like, oh yeah, every single class I learned something I didn't know. So that's great feedback for us. Um, so that we know that even though somebody's been an emergency manager for 20 years, there's still some stuff that we can teach them. And certainly medical, uh, military personnel as well. Oops. jumping around, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. So what happens when you get the degree? What can you do? So um, a lot of government agencies or businesses, large businesses, especially like Walmart or FedEx, uh, UPS, uh, things like that, they have people who help plan for contingencies. For example, um, years ago, I'm trying to think of when it was, back around 2000 or so, there was a huge flood in Nashville and that's the main headquarters for 
FedEx. Well, they had to, um, and they were in a very low lying area, so the area was flooding. So they had to um, stand up their operations plan to uh, figure out how to get all of these packages moved out of these warehouses that were be being flooded. So part of that, uh, Walmart does the same thing. They have all these kinds of planners. Sorry, keeps skipping on me. Um, the Red Cross or the International Red Cross um, working for FEMA or what we call BMAT teams. So if you're on the medical side, whether it's pharmacy, PA, nurse, whatever, um, they have disaster medical assistance teams or DMAT teams that get deployed uh, when medical personnel are needed. Um, emergency preparedness coordinators or trainers in hospitals or um, other uh, large companies, they have to have people to train their employees uh, in case of a disaster. A director or coordinator of emergency management, so even though you may not be an emergency manager now, you want to get that foot in the door to get that job. A lot of times they call for years of experience or an advanced degree, so this would provide that. The U.S. Public Health Service, um, a, an emergency manager, so not just a director or coordinator, but an emergency manager. And then we have um, certain uh, alumni that have actually become business continuity planners for large businesses like Walmart, FedEx, UPS, or insurance companies. Because keep in mind, the goal of an insurance company is to keep down the amount of claims that they have to pay out. So the more prepared a business is for um, some events that may close down their business, whether it's like something like the pandemic or a flood where they can't get into their office, business continuity planners help them figure out how that's going to work. All right, so the degree program is actually 36 credits total. Uh, it's typically completed in about two years and that's if a student takes two courses a semester and we are open three, three semesters, fall, winter and summer. However, we've certainly had students take five or six years. You have a total of seven years to complete the program. Um, I don't know what it is about firefighters. They'll run into a burning building to save your life, but they won't take more than one class a semester. So they're intimidated by academia, I guess. But you can certainly take more than that. We had a student just finish um, in four semesters, and we had that once before. Uh, they're more of a traditional student, so they're not working and they'll take something like four classes a semester. So the um, program is actually six core courses, that's 18 of the 36 credits, um, and then that includes that three-hour research course that's required. We call it a practicum. Some people do an internship, some students uh, do a research project. It's uh, whatever you and your faculty advisor work out. And then the other um, 18 credits are elective courses. So 18 required courses that everybody takes and then um, 18 credits of electives. And so basically this program, you can tailor it to whatever suits you. Uh, we've, I don't think we've had two students go through this program that had the exact same transcripts because it's so varied. And that's one of the things that makes our program stand out from the rest that are out there, which are basically every student takes the exact same 10 or 12 courses. Um, so you and um, the other students in the program and the students two years from now will have the exact same transcripts as you, except for perhaps the grades. But in our program, we have so many different um, courses that you can take that your transcript is very likely to be different than anybody else's in the program. So we do have six areas of concentration, public health, uh, cybersecurity, so if you're interested in that sort of aspect of cyber crime and so forth, criminal justice or law enforcement, most of our police officers and deputies go through that one, environmental hazards, things that might occur in the environment such as chemical spills and so forth, fire administration, a lot of our firefighters take that one, and then maritime safety and security. And the reason that we have this one is because we're in Florida, we're surrounded on three sides by water, and we have a lot of connections with the maritime industry here in South Florida, and um, the cruise industries and so forth, and the BP oil spill. Uh, we had some people that worked on that. So we have that so those sort of connections. So uh, we started a concentration in that, and we are the only one in the country with a concentration in 
maritime safety and security. Now, I'll go back to this slide where it says 18 credits are electives. Of those 18, if you decide to get a concentration in any one of these six areas, um, 12 of those credits have to come from your concentration. So let's say you wanted to do a concentration in cybersecurity, 12 of these 18 credits here would have to be in the cybersecurity concentration. That would still leave you an additional six credits to do whatever you wanted. If you wanted to take um, a really cool class like the one I teach called Weapons of Mass Threat, uh, that's, that's the most popular class, by the way. Um, and it's not just because I teach it, everybody just thinks it's cool. But if you wanted to do that, that would be an elective for you outside of the cybersecurity track. So there are many different options that you can do um, to make your, your degree really tailored to what you're interested in. So the criteria for admissions is that you have to have at least a bachelor's degree. Uh, if you only have an, um, an associate's degree, you have to finish that up and get a bachelor's. If you have a master's or doctoral degree already, that's great. We do not require a GRE or any sort of um, advanced admissions test. If you do it, that's great. If you don't, then we have a sort of a provisional admissions where you have to get a B or higher in your first three courses to stay in the program. <clears throat> now, if you take the GRE or the GMAT or anything like that, then we waive that provisional status. But if you don't take the GRE or any sort of admission test, then we um, wanna make sure that you're up to the task. So we make you uh, get a B or higher uh, in your first three classes to stay in the program. Of course, two letters of recommendation and an, a written statement or an essay. All right, so I just wanted to show here some testimonials. This is an alumni from 2015. She was one of our earlier graduates and she basically um, goes into the fact that this was very personalized. That goes into that um, small classroom. We usually have five to 10 students in a class. So it's very personal one-on-one -on -one between you and the instructor. And she's also talking about that personalized curriculum that allowed her to tailor her um, education to her, whole, her own um, sort of interests. This is a student who graduated uh, recently, just last year, in the cybersecurity field. And he did, uh, he's a city manager up in New York, in the state of New York, and he worked with our cybersecurity faculty to develop a cybersecurity plan for his. Uh, um, city where he works and it was kind of scary listening to him because when he started doing that initial risk analysis to see what needed to be done um, they were something like 98 percent exposed and he had to figure out how to close all those gaps and our cyber faculty worked with him to do that uh, this is another early graduate she was one of the first and um, she talked about how she learned all the different um, knowledge and skills enabled, uh, that enabled her to have a successful career. And we do stress critical thinking and analysis in our program. So it's not just learning a bunch of theory, but we do try to um, teach you specific things. And another thing that we do in our program is we try to help you graduate with basically a portfolio. So for example, if you take a, a course in business continuity, you will develop a business continuity plan that you can put in a notebook. If you take the exercise design course, you will design an exercise and you will have that to put in your notebook. So all of these classes that, that you do, we try to help you develop a plan or a product that allows you to have a portfolio so that when you go to a prospective employer, you can say, look, I know how to do a business continuity plan. I know how to plan an exercise. I know how to do a risk analysis. So we um, help the students not only learn the theories and the ideas behind emergency management and disaster response, but we really want you to graduate with a portfolio and skills so that you can take those to the job. Dr. Cohen, did you wanna add anything, please? Yeah, just a couple things. Um, as far as the exit opportunities and what, what you could do with this with it, as far as a career goes, um, something very important to note is for this particular field, 
there's about an 8% growth rate until 2026, which means obviously the Bureau of Labor Statistics put that out. There's a tremendous amount of growth in this field uh, because people are not educated or knowledgeable enough. And also they realize that this area, this field of expertise needs to be grown upon. Hence the reason why we have this program. Also, the exit opportunities and something that we pride ourselves on for our alumni in our program is not just getting the degree and that they paid for the degree and they get the diploma, but can they actually use it in the, you know, when they finish their, their program and their degree. So we have something that we do follow through up with follow through with all of our alumni. And we can proudly say that every single one of our alumni, except for one, <laughs> um, has found a position in the, in the actual field of disaster emergency management. It's something to pride ourselves on because we do care after you graduate that, listen, you just didn't get that diploma. You've got a diploma that's going to take you into a field of expertise and knowledge and you're going to actually be able to use it. Um, so, and the only reason we know this one is because we track them and we keep in contact with our, with our alumni all the time. Um, we are also very proactive with our current students, both Dr. Davidson and myself. We serve as the advisors for the program as well. And we are able to answer questions uh, very, you know, quickly and rapidly. We care a lot about our students. We're very student-centered. Um, just something about the program as far as administration. And being that it's an online program also, we are able to pick the I would consider the best um, faculty members in the country because it is an online program. So we can expand our outreach of instructors to whether they're in Colorado or Texas or Florida, North Carolina, in different areas of the country and actually specialize in that particular class. So I think it's some added um, insights. And just lastly, I want to talk on the interprofessional thing, why we're ranked first as well in the country. We have a, a coordination of interprofessional, not just within the university, as Dr. Davis was mentioning, uh, but we basically, like you said, with those concentrations that we have in public health, cybersecurity, criminal justice, fire administration, environmental hazards, maritime, they all work together. These are all different people from different fields of expertise coming in together to focus on disaster and emergency management. And that's the other interprofessional piece, bringing those different fields and merging them together in the classroom at the same time. So that's just some of the things I wanted to add. Um, just to just to touch base on that, so some more information. Yeah, and that one student who hasn't gotten a job was offered several jobs, but she wasn't willing to move because of her husband and her children. So she had the opportunity. So we're really pretty much batting a, batting a thousand, I guess you'd say. Another thing I wanted to do was I wanted to share another screen with you. Um, to find where it is. Sorry, I'm not seeing it right now. I wanna, I wanted to pull up our. Um, oh, here it is. Still not seeing it though. Well, I'll, Oh, here we go. Uh, are you seeing the disaster emergency management website? No, we're seeing the. Oh, it's slides. Still seeing it. Okay, so let me stop sharing and then go back and try to share this because I wanted to show you our website. Oh, here we go. Okay, so I wanted to show you our website. So all the programs have their own website and have specific information such as um, an overview, what you'll study, what you learn. Here are some of our accolades here. Here are our student testimonials. We actually put a little video on here about what is an emergency manager because so many people don't know what an emergency manager is. Um, here's all of our admissions criteria with our requirements, um, the tuition um, deadlines and dates. Yes, that's me right there. Here's our curriculum. So here we have a list of all the courses. And if you click on the course, you'll actually get a description of the course. So these are four of the six required courses. And then you have to take one in management and leadership and one, hang on. Okay, we're back. <laughs> um, so um, you have to take these four and then you have one in management leadership and one in threats and hazards. Here's the course I teach that weapons of mass threat, but if that's not what you're interested in, maybe you wanna do risk assessment or emergency hazards. Um, but we want our students to take management and leadership because we want them to learn those leadership skills. And then again, here are the electives. We have um, some psychology, some grant writing, if um, you wanna get a job, grant writing is a, is a very 
a coveted skill. Um, we have some leadership topics and those are sort of current topics of the day. Uh, things like social media and disasters, how that's used, good and bad. Um, healthcare emergency management. So if you're more in the healthcare industry, things like that. So we have several different um, courses that, that sort of cover that um, current, current topics, I guess you would call it really. And then here are our uh, concentration track courses that we have. Um, and then we have also interprofessional electives with biomedical informatics and national security affairs. If you're more interested in sort of a terrorism um, direction of your emergency management degree, we offer uh, some courses in, in terrorism um, from the national security affairs, which is sort of like a homeland security degree. It is in another college, but we do uh, share students quite a bit. So our students take their courses and vice versa. All right, anything else that you wanted to add, Dr. Cohen? Um, not, not really. I, I don't know if you scroll up on your the website just to, so they could see different categories of FAQs. Um, there is a list of FAQs listed uh, that gives you answers to a lot of the frequently asked questions. Obviously, that's what FAQs mean, but literally every question is there answered. However, we would love to hear from you. Our emails, as you can see, and our phone numbers are all listed on the website, uh, but we'd love to hear your answers, love to hear feedback. So please do email us, call us, and we will make sure to definitely reach back out to you and, and talk to you about the program uh, if you have any questions. Dr. Cohen, Dr. Davis, thank you so much for sharing your insight on the program. I know I learned a lot about the program benefits and a lot of great career opportunities for your graduates going into it and really having a career advantage going into that program. Um, I know we had one student that called Samantha. Did you have any questions before we wrap up the webinar? Yes. Um, back in like the beginning of the presentation, you spoke about how your students worked with the Medical Reserve and yes. um, I think it was disaster relief courses. Can you like go over that? Because I, like, I couldn't really like catch what you were saying. Okay, so uh, what, uh, what I was saying is that even though you're in, a, in an academic program, we, we strongly encourage our students to be active in the community outside of academia. So we don't want them to just get the academics. We want them to sort of live and participate in things that are happening in their community. So for, right, for example, right now, we have the COVID-19 pandemic going on. And you can see, this is an old picture, but you can see somebody handing out masks and um, supplies to people who need them. And that's the types of things that we do. Uh, we, we, help, we like them to be involved in the Community Emergency Response Team, which is a FEMA initiative. Uh, I'm a uh, CERT member and I lead the CERT team for our university. We also uh, encourage them to get involved with their local medical reserve corps. Uh, locally here in Fort Lauderdale in Broward County, we have a Broward Medical Reserve Corps in Miami. They have the Miami-Dade Medical Reserve Corps. And you don't have to have a medical background. Um, I'm a microbiologist immunologist, so I'm more of a scientist. Um, and then I also do this on the side because I have a background in law enforcement uh, before I became a scientist. So, um, but I, I want the students to get that sort of boots on the ground experience. Whenever there are disaster exercises that we are aware of, we let the students know and I ask for volunteers to come out and be victims um, or help out in some way. I do it a lot. Um, I often, um, am an observer and do a gap analysis. So I observe what happened and I write down what they did well and what they did poorly so that they can improve on that the next time. But we're always looking for volunteers to help out with those types of activities. Um, so that's, that's really what I meant is get outside the classroom and actually do some of this so that you get that sort of firsthand experience at it. I hope that helped answer your question. Yes, it did. Any other questions, Samantha? Um, no, I think that's the only question that I had. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. Cohen, thank you again. 
Um, I'm going to post this recording on our YouTube channel, but um, I appreciate both of you sharing your insight and answering all our questions and really being able to promote your program to our students. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate it.